from the great halls of their house, there are assembled three who hope to one day be the world's greatest driving heroes. Created from the cosmic legends of the universe comes our team captain, the Vision, Bill Fisher. Their soon-to-be Wonder Woman, Vicki Fisher. Our Captain Marvel and head flight trainee, Jennifer Scripchuk. And our Batman, the master of tools, gadgets, and all things mechanical, our mild-mannered soon-to-be billionaire, Alan Danvers. Their mission, to fight injustice, share what is right and wrong, to get you out of your house and come out racing with them, and serve all mankind. They are the Garage Heroes in Training Team. Captain's Log Supplemental. Miss Vicky. Yes, sir. You know what? What? You know, I've been thinking about this Sentinel system. Yeah. Tell me about the Sentinel system. So what I was thinking was we have the one car that's got the aim dash that's slowing us down. Because mm -hmm. installing the aim dash is actually it probably is easy, but it's quite hard the first time. And we haven't figured that out yet. The Sentinel system is really easy to set up. So what I was thinking was, why don't we put it in the uh, Lemons car and we'll worry about the AIM data information separately and we'll, we'll kind of break it down into a project because then we'd have the motorsports video system that we really, really want and we'd be able to stream it. We just won't have all the data inside, but we have the data X outside so we can combine them later. But I think that's a really good solution. So what does the, what does this uh, Sentinel system do? Well, w if it had the aim data, it would have all the data on the screen and you could see all their telemetry and everything live. But we'd be able to not only record it for viewing after the race, but we could actually watch our car during the race. Ooh, like on the monitor and everything? On a monitor? Or if you were at home and I was at a track or if you were at the track and I was at home, you know, depends depends on who gets the little short straw, but we'd be able to watch each other. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. And you know what? If you're driving, you know what you can do on the aim, on the Sentinel system? What's that? You can communicate to me with your hands and I can't do a thing about it. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you need to give a wave or a jersey wave, whatever you need. We could save it and see it on the screen. And then you can have up to three different cameras and it'll have picture in picture. You'll have the basic main shot out the front window and then two cameras where you put them wherever you want. One could be on the driver or one could be on the rear view. It's kind of cool. Then we can upload it onto YouTube. We could. We could bore millions of people on YouTube. I love it. All right. Very well. You know what uh, the only downside I see about this? But your mom and my mom are going to be panic stricken the entire weekend watching this thing to see if everything's going well. This is true. We probably shouldn't tell them. I like the idea of having a sentinel. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily we have them. maybe two. Depends on how things go. We're going to try. All right. That sounds like a plan. That's the sounds, project. We got to get that ready sounds, for the next race. Sounds great. All right. Very well. Thank you, ma'am. Ben Dawson, Ben Dawson, I've got something that has been a problem for me oh. since I started. Oh, really? Uh, well, let's let's get into this. Is it still continuing to be a problem right now? Not as much, but okay. All right. I don't I don't exactly know how I fixed it, or or if I fixed it, or if I'm just not noticing that is is <laughs> something else is a bigger problem. Who knows? <laughs> so what is it? So you ever go to a track and it's 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 pretty flat, like CMP, right? Uh huh. Yeah. And yeah. you can kind of you're going down one way, and and you can see the rest of the track, like half yeah. the track, and you know see the traffic's going on, check everything out. Sure. Life is good. Make a plan. You see, oh, there's the guy I'm trying to catch, or the girl yeah, that's yeah. in front of me. Yeah. That's that's good. I know what you're saying too, because it also kind of helps you keep track of cars you're either trying to catch or you're uh -huh. getting called by. Like, oh man, they were at that place last uh -huh. lap, and now you know they're there. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember going down there and I saw Miss Lara was wailing down my backside and catching up to me, and I was like, oh, this, this kind of this. There's not a lot I can do, you know, things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But just on the other side of the world, sometimes racetracks have these things called hills or mm-hmm. trees or yeah. guardrails or, or I've seen those too, yeah. Yeah. And you can't see around the turn. Or corner stations sometimes. Or corners stuff in the way, man. Blind corners used mm-hmm. to drive oh, me yeah. batty. Yeah. Any uh any tips for our people who are uh, any tips for the blind, shall we say? <laughs> Yeah, number one, uh, learn to love and respect and trust your corner stations. Ah, just, that's, a just, good one. that's a good that, to me, one. That's, that's number one. I just have to kind of let go and let let God, except for just let go and let faithful workers take care of me. And hopefully, hopefully they're on the ball and paying good attention. I mean, that's, that's really your, your best safety net. I mean, that's uh, l- luckily we are, are able to go do this sport and have people who sort of um, maintain the flow of traffic and, and watch out for everybody's safety and bring the flow to a halt or to a crawl when they need to. And so I, that's, that's my thing. I mean, I, I kind of, well, especially once I'm, I'm familiar with the track, I sort of know what to expect around a black corner as far as the geography of it. You know, I'm not going to be surprised by any element of the track. Like, Oh my gosh, it slopes off. Or like, you know, once I know the physicality of the track and I kind of know what to expect as far as the flow of traffic and how other people behave around the blind section, then I'm just kind of going to just give in and just be paying attention to the, the track conditions that are coming as told to me by, the presence or absence of flags at a flag station. Because because one thing I've noticed is when the person in the flag station is jumping up and down and waving their flag as fast as they can, it's generally not a practical joke. No, it's absolutely. You're right. <laughs> well, kind of getting a good feel for your flag station's body language is, is important. You know, if they're standing there just dangling a single yellow flag, like mm-hmm. still sitting down and just sort of holding it out the edge of the window or whatever, uh, dangling it down. It probably means just hey, pay attention, but you know, there's nothing hard to do. But you're right, you're right. If they're if they're out there and they're animated, they're really trying to get your attention but with waving the flag and whatever kind of tango they're rocking, mm-hmm. good time to go ahead and, and back it down. It doesn't mm-hmm. to me, if I see that, it doesn't matter how competitive things are around me. I don't mind if I don't mind if another car's gonna get you know, if two cars are gonna go by me and, and I never get any justice, I don't care. I'm still gonna slow down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Does that make I sense? Do. <laughs> You know, we are we're, us endurance races are all about justice, and that guy passed me under yellow of all lies. But I'm to good. Me, yeah, all, all bets are off. What you see is that it's, it's, it's a potentially extreme situation. I am going to back up. I don't care what how competitive the situation is that I'm in. I don't care if I if I lose a race for that. I'm still not. I'm not going to go barreling in there to risk me. You know, it might be risking a worker's life. You might be, you know, a worker maybe having to run out and try to check on somebody. There are plenty of reasons why. They may be presenting, you know, with kind of an extreme caution, but that, yeah. that's the time to pay attention to slow down. Oh, for sure. You know, you know what? I th- I think the thing that helped me the most, and, and you know, you can correct me because you know you've been doing this longer than me. The thing okay. that I noticed that helped me with blind corners was the I began to notice that the track, just because I can't see it, does not move in between laps and reorient itself <laughs> it tends to stay yeah. where it is and i can yeah. usually count on it being there when i come back the next time it's usually about the same plus or minus you know <laughs> yeah so that's uh, that's something that's kind of i've kind of re-examined uh having uh little kids again um it was uh, kind of going through each of them understanding object permanence mm-hmm <laughs> so yeah the track is still going to be there the object is still permanent which is it's very reassuring which you kind of i mean yeah a, a big part of becoming more and more comfortable on track and in the pursuits that we're doing as you have bill is just is, is the repetition and more or everything becoming more muscle memory there more and more things to get used to and as you kind of knock off some of the big things you kind of work your way down to being less worried about um you know things that might have freaked you out but weren't you know weren't top of the list things that you needed to, to knock out yet. So it sounds like blind quarter or something you worked up to. Yeah. So I, I think the two things that I've heard, at least from the students that I've dealt with, that their their difficulty with blind corners is trusting when to turn in yeah, and, and trusting when to get on the gas. It doesn't seem to be the brake pedal so much, but those are the two really? that, that make them hesitant. I, I certainly understand. Am I turning in in the right place? Because you can't really see where you're trying to come out. Um, and I guess you, you, are they worried about getting on the gas too too early because they can't see the exit or getting well, on they, too late? They, they can't see where they're going, so it's it's early for them to give that full commitment, and they're kind of right, right. pat 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 pat. So, is there any kind of tips or any? 
I mean, I've got one for the the turn in, and maybe for the gas. But you know, one thing that comes to mind for me. But you got any ideas? Ah, uh, I mean, yeah. Watch watch a video from whatever track you're going to. Watch a bunch of video of somebody driving a car similar to yours who's good at it, um, and just watch what they do a million times. And then by the time you get there, hopefully. You've got it pretty built in. You understand, like, hey, this feels crazy, but I saw that guy do it. I know I can go on the gas here, even though I can't see the exit. This is where you can do it. Mm-hmm. And and also, you know, I mean, it helps to just repetition always helps. Seat time always helps. And the more experienced a driver you are, you'll get to the understanding that, hey, if I even if I get on the throttle a little early, I can always edge back out, sort of compensate with, oops, I'm pushing too far off at the exit. You know, you can always say, like, ah, yeah, because mm-hmm. he was going, I need to back out. So, you know, if you do the experiment with a your throttle time where you think it needs to be and it's too soon, too too early, too much, too soon. Just back out a little bit and try it again the next time. You yeah. know, but uh I, I, I I'm a huge believer in watching video from a place I'm unfamiliar with. Um so I'll just watch a you know a, a, a crazy amount of video before I show because because when I get there I want to put my butt in butt in the seat and do a lap or two where I'm figuring out where I'm going. But after that I want to be gone. You know yeah. so I, I'm not I'm not trying to waste any time learning the track. So I'll 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 learn as much as I can through video, including how to handle, you know, this, this various blind turns and stuff like that. So see what yeah. other, other good, credible drivers are doing. And I'll try to do that. Um, so what's cool. your tip about, uh, what's your tip about turn in? Well, a, a couple, a couple things that I, I find that help me is I try and find something, even if it's blind, I try and find oh, some yeah. marker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're a marker you know, guy. I forget. A, a tree, a, a, flag station a spot on the on the track something right give me something so it's not blind anymore because i have something to orient on and then i use that to kind of creep up on it i don't you don't have to go from your sighting lap to you know 100 percent final you know i am going to qu- do about a qualifying lap on my next time around you can kind of creep up on it a little bit you, you should like I, I i overstated it like i'm just a freak about that but yeah. not everybody does that yeah but i mean it's it's you know, if you've got some time, especially if you have a practice day, try to give yourself something to look at and try to make sure, you know, however far you can see, you're using your eyes properly and you're taking in as much as you can see because it's blind, but it's not like there's a mask over your face. It's, you yeah, know, you, you can't see the exit or whatever. But I, I think uh, you made it important. You think you're making an important point too and saying, choose your own marks, choose the thing that makes sense for you rather than here and the grizzled old dude go, hey, it's so and so you break here. I'm like, well, what car? You know what I mean? Like, you, I, I just, I always tend to shy away from just general track wisdom you hear from some old turkey at the track. Like, I usually shut you, that down, but you can take it flat. <laughs> yeah, you can do that flat. Don't even worry about it, man. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I think, so I think you made a good point. Find, find a, find a, a visual reference that works for you at that moment, but be ready for it to change or be ready for, you know, like I, you know, I was breaking when I could see this thing. Now I'm breaking when I'm next to it. But, you know, yeah. Yeah, you're, I think that's a good point. I, I am not big on, you know, visual cues, but a lot of folks are. I, I, I can't say how I do it, but it's, uh, it, I am not that much. I, I might be looking at a visual cue like a break board or something like that or something right by the track. That's typically where I look. But there are other folks who are like, yeah, you know, when you see the oak tree line up with the spruce, that's exactly where I like to turn. You know what I mean? Just find something yeah. that works for you. Uh, but yeah. uh, I, I, I'm generally like kind of more, more micro looking at, some next to the track reference is kind of usually what I'm looking at. Yeah, my my favorites are are track or or near track. You know the the church out in the far end that Gingerman <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. help me at all. It's just, yeah, the, the one the one I, the one thing I always do it, the, the, it, this the, I never do anywhere else is, is when I'm telling people how to do VI or where to turn in for return three. I'm like, yes. And when you're fa- as soon as you're looking through the bar in the tech bar, I can't even know that I'm not doing it. I can't think of it. I'm always like, when you're lined up with this bar, and here's where you turn it. But that's the only one I do, I promise. <laughs> so, and you know, creep up on it. There's nothing wrong with creeping up on it, especially if it's practice. Yeah, sure. You know, if it's qualifying or if it's in the race and it's a sprint race and you got no time, then you know, take a take a full bend off and bite of it and, and go for it. But you know, if you if you can practice. Even if it's video, like Ben likes, you know, you can figure these things yeah. out. Yeah, if you're ever trying to find uh, a video of, of a place and you can't figure it out, message us here at yeah. Garage Heroes in Training, and we will point you in the right direction of a credible video of somebody doing a good job of driving the place where you're trying to go. 
Yep, we all the tracks we've gone to, I've got at least one video, if not more. And uh, yeah, yeah, tell us what you're driving and what you want to be doing at that, that, that track. If you're just if you're kind of struggling, but I am a huge believer in and using somebody else's video as a good waypoint so that I just I can get the track even faster. That's that's all it's about for me. I mean, it's safety is safety is of course important and also a consideration, but mostly I just want to get out there and go fast. Yeah, you know what? Uh, let's let's give an example. Um, mm-hmm. Probably the most famous blind corner example I can think of is at Laguna Seca, the corkscrew. Yeah, I'm sitting there like, which one? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> goofball. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, and that's a wow one. And, and so many people will talk about that being like the signature corner of that track. But the one time I got to go drive a six hour race there, the first couple three times I did it, I was like, oh cool. And then I was like, oh no, that's just a, that's just like a speed bump getting to the next couple of corners, which are really fast and fun. Exactly. But yeah. But yeah, it is blind. You, you roll up to it and you're just driving off sort of, it feels like you're driving off the end of the world. You just, and it's also a huge drop. So mm-hmm. not only are you just kind of taking off, it's a, it's a sharp left turn and you just got to go straight down to the bottom of this hill. And it's kind of a dog leg through there, like a little ass through there. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. And if you mess it up, you can mess it up pretty big. But, uh, yeah. That's a, that's a wild one. But I, you know, what's funny is I never was that worried about going through it as far as from the aspect of it being a blind turn. Cause that's also, a pretty rigorously self-cleaning turn. You know what yeah. I mean? Whatever's messing up, then there's probably not going to be still on the track when I got to. So I, cause it. Because the turn is so, is so steep, and I think it's yeah. way off camper. I just assumed that anybody messing up ahead of me is probably not going to still be there by the time I get there. Yep. I had, uh, I had the one guy just keep going straight. Yeah. I was like, the straight. He went, he went straight. So instead, instead of dipping down to the left, he went on straight down to the big, just, uh, the big well, drains and all. Stuff. It it, it kind of you know he made some attempts at left, but not enough to to actually go mm-hmm. left. He made a left for a gesture. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was feeble attempt at left, but yeah, it was kind of funny. <laughs> you, you know what else I I think might help is and and I think this is part of what I've been doing is getting a mental picture of the track in your mind. So even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can see it in your head and you kind of know what you're getting into. Right. I mean, if you, if you have a solid idea of what's happening with that turn, whether you can see it or not, you know what's going on. You know, maybe, yeah. I, I don't know. I, 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 I think it's been so long since I've thought about or worried about blind turns. It's hard for me to kind of go back and, and think about the things that might have freaked me out about them. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it kind of once you understand, like you said earlier on, you know, we know that the track is still going to be there. What's what's a couple of other examples of blind turns that you can think of that a lot of us have encountered? Um, it, it's usually like exit turns, and you got, uh, let's see, the uh, there's I mean, a turn couple... twelve at Road Atlanta. It's kind of hard to see where you're. You can actually end up by the time you're at the top of the hill to the bottom. Actually, pre turn twelve, like the bridge area, for me was always. Yeah, it's was, because you're coming, you're fast coming up over that hill. You're third or fourth gear, top of third right. gear, getting into fourth gear, coming up over that hill. You're like, what's going to be in the, the you know, over the crest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like which of those little light, uh, those colors on the bridge yeah. do you want to be under, and what angle you want to be doing it? That was always my concern because well, I pretty much you know conceded that once I was going full throttle and I was over this crest and I could see where I was going, I was going where I was going because I was, and I'm. It's you know, you, you know, you say that, but that it, 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 it might it might feel that way. But there's you can still do a whole lot of moving around after you come down that. that, that I want you to come over that crest and going down into turn twelve. There is still multiple angles that you angles oh, no. that, that you can deploy. That's that's, <sighs> that's not exactly what I meant. It, it was kind of like a couple. I think it was. I think it might have been twice on our team. We were we were camping, um, paddocking to the right. I think that's the pro side. Mm-hmm. on the inf- yep. infield yep. and and we came down with the wrong angle so we were we were going off into the paddock and we didn't mean to uh <laughs> oh yeah 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 one of my teammates is one of my teammates has, has tried to pit in a race and gone to the wrong instead of pit whichever way it was he went to the other side we're like oh, okay let's come back yeah. out and come Just back around again we were fully committed and we ended up in pit yeah. lane and it was like, okay, well, you know, just seeing what's going on. How you doing? You know, Hey, how's it going down here? Why's nobody over here? All right. I'll see you later. All right. You guys drive much slower than those guys over there. <laughs> <laughs> so that there's one there. Um, I think Charlotte's fairly flat. CMP's flat. Pit race has Barber? a couple. Which one? Barber. I'm just trying to think of Barber has one. I, don't know. I haven't done it uh, in real I'm- life. This uh, this just tells you how much I'm thinking about blind turns. I'm sure there are plenty of them. I'm just, yeah. Well, VIR is going to have one or two, right? Uh, turn ten, I guess South Bend. You're kind of going up, kind of sweeping up over this turn down into the oak tree. It's kind of blind. 
mm-hmm. doing that. Um, yeah, hog pen's fairly blind. I mean, you start way up the top of the hill by the time you come out, you're not sure what's going to be at the bottom of the hill, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, New Jersey's I'm bad. flat I'm... everywhere. Well, there's kind of a turn five at Lightning is a little blind, but it crests pretty easy. It's not too bad. The, the, the thing that you got to remember is the track is going to be there every time. That's right. Yeah, I, I like like a. I'm not trying to sound like Ben Dawson the hero, but I'm just not really paying attention to what's blind and what's not because I know, because I know where the track is going to be, and I know that the corner workers are going to be telling me if there's a problem. So mm-hmm. I just go full chat and get after it. You know. Yeah. Well, Thompson has one that's uh you're, you're dependent on the corner station. Um, I think the big thing is a blind turn becomes less and less important as you visit the track more and more. Like if it's a track you go yeah. to, the blind turns aren't a big deal. If it's your first time at a track, sometimes they can be like a little freaky. Yeah. But you, you yeah. just gotta you just gotta get used to them and, and you know rely on the corner stations and take small bites of the apple until you're done. Bill, Bill, what what, what, what I feel like you're trying to say is yeah. that seat time See times in lovely. any any in any amount can fix what's going on with you, with your car, with your what? life. Well, and sea time and sea time in massive abundance could probably fix everything about you. Well, I how mean, slow you are, how not fun you are, not you. I'm saying, oh, in general, you know, you, not people. Not, no, yeah. not you, Bill. Just yeah, yeah. You I people, you. you people. Yeah. yeah, not you, Bill. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about me too. I'm I'm, pro- I'm projecting this onto myself too. I'm just thinking about it. what the benefits of infinite sea time could be. Well, I mean, you got to battle the the doing it wrong over and over and over can make things worse. <laughs> you it can't know? be can be very frustrating. If you're not showing any improvement, maybe the, yeah. the infinite the infinite seat time could be just like a death spiral. Uh, you're you not just, good at it. I'm getting really good at doing this turn wrong. So you know <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, well you know but but yeah it's uh, you know the the more you're comfortable with any any circuit, uh the better you're gonna be at it, blind turns included. I think the only turn that I have not gotten better at still is madness at mid Ohio. Cause I just can't get it right, man. It just, there's nothing. I, I don't know what to do with that turn. Now, one of these days you people are going to end up making me have to go check out mid Ohio. You need to. Yeah, I need we'll, to. Get, we'll, we'll get you up there. Uh, All right. For those let's who do, want, let's do, the, let's do the AER race up there. Maybe next year or something like that. All right. Very well. For those who want to All see right. Ben Dawson at, uh, Mid Ohio with us, garage years and training at gmail.com. Join our non existent Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> start start a Patreon in our name, send the money to us. How about that? That's a good if you want to be a real fan, start us a Patreon, raise us a bunch of money, and then uh, send it to my house. Yeah. Yeah. Or just go help Ben fix his car. That might do it too. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What am I talking about? Just come build this Becky 46 for me. If you do, you can drive it as much as I'm willing to let you, which will probably be a lot. That's right. So we're, we're taking uh, we're taking interns. <laughs> it's absolutely yeah. At this point, at this point, I'm taking wrench holders and people who would just drink in the garage and encourage me. I don't care. Yeah, cheerleaders, whatever. Don't even have to bring pop bombs. All positions are open. That's you know right. I mean? Gosh, I just need some inspiration. I do. All right, sir. Blind corners. I think we see them now. They're inspiring to me. I love them. Yep. Well, it's not a lot about a racetrack you don't love. So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Have a good night, sir. Thank you. Good night.